Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial by Eclip. So I'm going through all of your comments and messages. I realized that I didn't cover up the snare. So this tutorial is going to be about the snare. So I'm going to show you what is my approach making the snares. There is kind of a technique about that. So here we have a template. So around six months ago, I sent a pull to some of my customers from Eclipse Production. Like what would be the next project, what they would like to release as a new product. And most of them said more than like 60% said that they would like a template, like drum template, everything mixed and processed. So I was thinking about how that would work and I came to some idea where I built it all different grooves. It will, the name of this template will be like groove templates this is gonna be the first one in in a series of them and I'm planning to do around five of them in three different BPMs like 138 140 and 142 so that you can use the same template in four, uh, three different BPMs and to cover like different bass notes because it is not possible to release like one template with all the different bass notes because that is not possible because when you do a bass line from one note then kick it's gonna be tweaked around to, to fit the bass line in that note so it's really complicated for me to do the old bass notes and especially because my when i do the bass lines they are really like fat and, and clicky so if i transpose this bass, li bass line to another tone that will I will need to fix the phase and everything and it will not work that way so for each note I will need to build a different template different kick and different bass the rest is is going to be like reusable in all of them because they are all going to go in 138 140 and 142 but kick and bass are is not possible to to reuse for example for this template I will need to make another bass line just if I change the key uh, probably different uh, oscillator settings, the different multiband positions and different phasing position and so on, so on. So what I did here, I made like a offbeat bass line, offbeat, a little bit different than the first one. Seesaw, the rolling bass line, some of the glides, two or three different glides and triplet. So that way you are going to be able to use all different grooves, but just in E-tone for this template. So let's come back to the snares. Also, I want to say that in the last year and a half, I didn't make much music, but what I did when I bought SM9, basically I went back to the beginning of rethinking about each choice that I was making in, in the past and trying to, to move forward regarding the sound quality and sound design. So basically I started with the kick. I went through all different VST that are used to make kicks and try all of them and I spent around three or four months only making the kicks. I made around 25 and I finally came to the point where I really like what I did. Also the bass lines, I went to all different VSTs, all the different processing plugins. As you can see, this bass line is like extremely processed with a lot of, and this is maybe a 20 bass line that I did for this template only. So I tried like Serum waveform with another waveform and on the end I made my own waveform and I got the best results. I tried uh, Silent, I tried Serum, I tried Il Harmor, I tried Spire, I tried Chronox. And finally, I think I came to the point where the bass lines sound really, really good. And then I moved to the drums. And if I want to put something for sale, that means that I need to make everything by my own because of the royalties and everything. So basically what I did for the drum shots, I borrowed from a friend of mine a lot of drum machines. He's a, like a huge collectioner of the analog gear. So I recorded some, some samples, not some, I recorded a bunch of samples of 909, 808, uh, Korg drums, many different drum machines. And also I found uh, some royalty free sample packs which are also used just for samples from drum machines it's a little bit complicated process but i finally start living a dream that i'm going to be able to make everything from the beginning this was my dream when i was a kid now i came to the point where i can do the whole sound design without any sample pack i'm talking only about the drums kick and bass and the rest so i pull it like for snare here there's a 
four different layers it's supposed to go those two as well they are out of the mix now and also this aqua loop i just use used like one of the loops that i used in the past just to see how it will cover up with the whole mix just like for testing so it will come without the loop so that you guys are going to be able to drop some loops and to break this kind of template so that doesn't everybody sounds the same basically that's it so this is the whole process with all four layers right now and this is with the kick And this is with the kick and bass. Okay, let's go now through all of those layers one by one. And just to turn off the, the bus processing. This was the snare that I made. And this is also layered from a lot of different like snares, claps. But it sounds like really thin. So after a while listening in this template, after a while probably for the next four months, I realized that clap, that snare and clap are kind of really thin. So basically I start dropping in um, a little bit more to make it more fatter. So what is the my approach in building the snare? There's a point where first punch of the snare and the kick. So when the snare is punching the kick, I always put there like one small snare with like bigger transient. So that moment when the snare punching the kick is really important for me. For example, if you leave only the clap, like this one. There is the body, there is the tail, but there is no punch on the kick and it kind of miss. I hear this a lot in, in music production when people are putting only the claps inside. I mean, I used to play drums, so for me as a drummer, is really important part like punching the snare is is really important part of the groove and everything so there's a clap and there is a clap with the snare that i did before so the clap is here just to give the body like in the mids something that that will go in the mids because usually snares have a low end or low mids and then they have a, like a small dip in the mids and they go into the highs this is why they sound punchy so basically my approach is that always i have a, like a snare or two snares just to bring the punch and the kick and they are usually really short this is the first part of the snare and then you have like the clap for the body to to, to hear it and feel it in the mix and sometimes i even add like a longer clap with the reverb but it goes in fade in this is like for the tail if you want to have a feeling that that the clap is like a little bit longer but i didn't use this for for this template i will probably drop it in later but it's going to be optional like if you want to keep the the tail or not so let's go to the third one and the third one is so this is a snare from 808 and his job is just to bring this punch on the kick You have a feeling like you cannot hear it in the mix, but you can feel it. And there is another snare which kind of has a lot of low mids, like the peak on the low mids, which is really important to have into the snare. For example, claps usually start from 800 hertz or 1K, but uh, the lower information are also important. This is what gives the punch to the uh, when the when the snare hits the kick and technique for that is for example as you can see here it has information on 200 and the point is like that you play it and that you reduce this kind of peak moment until it just goes inside the mix but if you low cut it you will lose it you will make a snare to sound as, as clap or even the hi-hat because usually the snares doesn't have much information in the from 1k till 5k see there's a dip and then I brought a little bit of highs here just to bring this punch back and those two snares together give kind of enough punch for for my taste and then bringing the clap to bring the mids in front and then there is a fourth layer the first snare that I made This snare that I made used to have also those informations, but because of bringing those two, I needed to reduce those peaks on the low mids as well. So all together they sound... 
Now, next step that is to bring all these four layers into one group because when you are layering a lot, it is much easier if you have one channel just to reduce or to compress or to process further on. And when you are using a lot of elements for one one sequence, it's really clever to put a compressor on the end. That way, you can all those sounds to to have a to be sure that they are not going to peak or to just sit well in, into the mix. This is amazing compressor for a bus, for a groups and, and buses. And basically it just keeps it like inside the mix. Otherwise it's just like a bringing different elements in different times a little bit more in front. And this way I just removing the, the peaks and just compressing them a little bit so the snare sits on the mix much better. And because now all four elements are enough and like kind of snappy and short. And I always try to bring some kind of natural thing inside with the reverb just to give a small tail. As you can see, the decays here are pretty low. Just in mids is a little bit more like 1.8 seconds and mix is just on the 9%. But it will give this, this kind of feeling inside of it. Now you can hear the reverb a lot, but if you play the whole mix together, you'll realize that it will kind of just gives some kind of feeling inside and it doesn't make any dramatical changes. So basically that was it. This was my technique of making the snares. I hope that you like this video and see you soon. I hope that you are all well and stay tuned. Bye.